Okay, I just finished um, doing a t in the last video. I did a white noise test using an MB1 speaker and showing the results by you know removing this foam padding, all this dep dampening material. And you can see the results in that video and how it made it really a big difference uh, once I removed it and also added the foam back. And you can see the results in that video. But I wanted to show you guys, basically explain to you the difference between these dampering materials that you see right here. This is, you know, your basic foam, which is still used in a lot of um, high-end loudspeakers today. And then you have your wool. This is actually wool and dampening. And this used to be used a lot, especially in the 60s and 70s in loudspeaker design. And then it went from this to basically this foam. And now, you know, starting in, I guess you could say in the 90s or maybe earlier than that, they started using, you know, this polyfill. And this is what they basically use right now. They still use this, um, this is polyfill material. And the thing about this um, polyfill material is the fact... Um, you see it in a lot of um, bookshelf loudspeakers, but mostly subwoofers. And the reason why they put this material, this different material in the cabinets is to help reduce the resonance and the sound waves from, you know, reflecting in the cabinet, which caused the um, vibration, which is, um, you know, resonance. So by doing this, they want to dampen the sound of a cabinet. But also at the same time, it, it really... Um, not only dampens the sound, but it reduces the um, the sensitivity of the loudspeaker itself by uh, putting this material. Because you have to remember, this material is designed to absorb sound waves, basically. Basically, the sound waves that are emitted from this driver, from the rear of this driver inside of the box, has to filter, you know, through this material. Especially if you put a, you know, if you fill this cabinet up with this material. Like, like you've seen in a lot of loudspeakers, that sound waves have to filter through this material. So it basically slows the sound down of the loudspeaker. And, um, you know, you can see from the test that I did, you know, um, it's it's basically, you know, used to increase the size of the closure. Like if you have a smaller closure, especially like a subwoofer cabinets, because subwoofer cabinets usually have big drivers, like 10 and 12 inch drivers. So what they do is to um, they make the cabinet or uh, the boxes smaller, and when they make them smaller, put larger um, drivers in them. They use this type of material, and in theory, this is actually posed to increase the size of the closure. It poses to make their uh, speaker think it's in a loud in a larger enclosure, you know, deep in the base. That's the main point of using this in, in a subwoofer box is to really deepen the bass and make the speaker think it's, it's in a bigger box because the bigger box you have, the more deeper the bass is and the, and the lower the response is. So this is the number one reason why they use this in subwoofers. But the drawback to that is actually, um, like I say, it's, it slows your speaker down a little bit and it also decreases the sensitivity of your loudspeaker. So if you have a speaker that's really efficient and you put this stuff in there, it's going to lower the efficiency by maybe... Um, three or four decibels which is not really a big deal if you are using a, a um, like a subwoofer cabinet that has a built-in amplifier but if you're using a passive loudspeaker like this which is which has a sensitivity of 86 decibels or 85 decibels it's going to further drop the response of the speaker down to maybe 82 or 83 decibels because you got this stuff inside the cabinet and again, you know, a lot of manufacturers use it to improve the mid-range. It's, you know, they're in on paper, it's supposed to improve the, you know, the mid-range response of the driver. Because basically, it, it's kind of um, filtering the bass a little bit. It's, it's filtering the, the sensitivity of the driver. And it's also filtering the bass in a way where, you know, you could look at it from the charts and see the results. And this is, you know... This is one of the reasons I don't really like to use it use it much in a lot of loudspeaker designs because I feel like it takes away from the driver, um, takes away a small percentage of the sound of the driver to me. And this is why, you know, I use other materials for this. Or I don't use any type of dampening material. And, and there's uh, ways that, you know, uh, and a lot of manufacturers have discovered this. You know, this is why they don't even use this either because... Um, they found ways where they could basically 
increase the sound and increase the bass performance and even the speed of the bass without using any type of this um, polyfill. You know, there, there's ways to do that when you build a cabinet. You know, you build a cabinet a certain way and it can really enhance the sound of the driver without using any type of this stuff. But this is what this is designed for, you know, even this wool is designed to dampen the sound of the loudspeaker or dampen the standing wavelengths that are inside this cabinet. And, you know, it, it hurts both ways, you know, um, in a way it's good, but also in another way it's, it's kind of negative, you know, it's, it's something that may reduce the sound quality of your um, loudspeaker by using it unless you really know how to use it or you use it in the right spot in the cabinet and this is why you see a lot of manufacturers when they use this type of foam panel they put it not directly on all corners of the loudspeaker inside all inside the panels they actually you know place it maybe on the sides only on the top or bottom and there's ways that you could do this to really help approve the sound and slightly dampen the um, cabinet without really taking away the um, sound quality of the drivers you know and that's the whole point you know designing loudspeakers you want these drivers to play clean and you want them to play natural sounding you don't want to take anything away from this driver you know you don't want to take away any other sound of this driver that's what i mean you don't want to take away the sound of this driver you want to get as much possible sound that you can from this driver, especially in a box this size, you know. So th this is why, you know, for me, it's not ideal to use, you know, this polyfill a lot. Um, I basically rely on just the design of the cabinet and the building material that is being used to build a cabinet. And also, you know, the shape of the cabinet and how it's structured on the inside, but also how it's structured, you know, through the joints as well. And all of that affects the sound quality of a loudspeaker. Even the um, joints that are used to join the panels of the cabinet together affects the sound quality. And it also f affects the um, performance of the um, driver or the woofer as well. And also the tweeter. You know, even the type of faceplate that is used on the tweeter really affects the sound quality of the driver. Especially if you are, um, you know, using, if you're playing the speaker at a very high level. Where, you know, when you play this, especially something this small, you have to play it at a certain level, you know, uh, above moderate just to get decent um, bass response for something this small. And when you do that, it basically puts a lot of stress, believe it or not, on this tweeter, on the faceplate of the tweeter because it's bolted into the cabinet, as you see. And I have did tests and I have to, I guess I will have to show you the test, but I did tests where I have actually used just a 15 watt amplifier and I had the amplifier at about um, at 30, right? Amplifier starts at um, zero, goes up to 30, with 30 being a high, you know, high volume. And this thing was playing lot, so loud, and it was playing pretty clean. But at the same time, you could actually feel the face plate flexing. And, and again, you know, um, that's something that you don't want. And, and that is something that a lot of people really don't really pay attention to or it goes unnoticed that when you play a speaker at a certain level it causes not only the whole cabinet to vibrate or even the terminals in the back but it also causes the face plate to vibrate so to help reduce the vibration of this face plate you would um have to make the face plate out of a different type of material that is very dense and that doesn't flex as much and with this particular, with, with, I'm sorry, with this uh, particular loudspeaker, that, that is what I'm working on. I actually, you know, this was a faceplate that I designed myself and the tweeter. And I found out that, you know, there is flex in this faceplate if you play the speaker at a very loud level. So what I decided to do is use a different type of um, material for this faceplate. It's basically like a composite material. It's not plastic and it's not meant it's a composite that gives it kind of more of a deadening sound but most importantly it doesn't flex there's no flex when you are playing this thing at high volumes so um again you, you know when you do tests you can really you know see how a loudspeaker function and see how it performs under stress and even under stress, the speaker performs um, very well. And the cabinet is even different from the original speaker. This is actually um, 
a newer version. This is the LCR 85, which the original version was the LCR 80, which was built, I guess, back in 2011. So that's like, um, what is, um, 13 years, right? 13 years, um, later. Uh, I'm coming out with this version, the 85, which uses the same driver and basically the same design of tweeter, but a different model, which has a flatter response. But the biggest change of it is two things. Um, the original LCR was sealed cabinet design. This is actually going to be a vented cabinet design. And it's going to have a new faceplate. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to have a composite um, material for the face plate and this is going to really help um dampen the sound of the tweeter so it's not so um you know it's not so loud but more um subtle especially for a cabinet this size and it's just going to be you know really stiff material so it won't flex on the high pressure so it won't distort the sound so i guess that's about it you know for this video i just wanted to give you guys um you know, just to give you guys an idea on how to use this type of material and, and what it's used for and, and what its main purpose is for. And but again, you know, um, you know, some of the speakers I design, I use, you know, this foam padding and this, you know, I, I really don't use this much unless it's really necessary. And again, it all depends on the design. It, it really depends on what you want from a loudspeaker. And this is, you know, the reason why you want to use this, this um, dampening materials. Depending on the type of um, loudspeaker you have, the response of the driver, size of the cabinet, all that must be taken into consideration when you, you know, design a loudspeaker. So there's a lot of times where you really don't have to use this dampening material if you use, you, you know, a certain type of wood or building material for your cabinet. Because you don't, you know, really need it unless you are building something like a subwoofer, you know. Of course, whatever cabinet you design, it's going to cause resonance. But a lot of manufacturers have found out how to channel the resonance into the lower part or the lower response of the driver where you don't hear it. So this is the reason why you don't see a lot of speakers, you know, having this type of uh, different material inside of it because they figured out how to put that resonance somewhere else where you don't hear it so that's you know basically it so i hope you enjoyed this video and again you know this is a speaker to really um look forward to um this year um this is going to be a speaker where you know it's going to be fully upgradable and also you could be able to convert it from a vented cabinet into a cell cabinet there will be a kit that will allow you to do that so i hope you enjoyed this video and i see you guys later thank you very much for watching goodbye